cool down. My Robin runs hot. It has the entire time I've owned it. As I understand it, Reliant coolant gauges, in direct opposition to their name, are unreliable. However, I'm gonna choose to believe this one because when it says the engine is hot, it behaves a little bit differently. My first reaction to the problem of this car runs too hot was, drop the engine, take it completely apart, replace all of the seals, replace any parts that are worn and need replacing, and basically rebuild the entire engine. But that first reaction is called scope creep, and it's why all of my projects are unfinished. So just this once, I'm gonna tackle the problem at hand, and only the problem at hand. I swear. So why is it overheating? I don't know. I have no idea. So I bought parts, and I'm gonna throw parts at it and see if that works. This is a new radiator. I bought it off eBay. It was readily available, which surprised me, given this is a Reliant Robin. This is all aluminum, and it's either 15% more efficient or 15% larger. I can't remember which, if it's bigger or better, but it should be better, and most importantly, it's new. I imagine the radiator that's in here is all gunked up and full of 20 years of Robin goop. I bought a new thermostat, and after I ordered this, I was talking to Mr. Hubnut about this and the parts that I had bought, and he said, you know, there's actually two different types of thermostat for the Robin, two different temperature ranges. There's 88 degrees Celsius and 82 degrees. 82 is the best for overheating issues. I didn't know this before I bought mine, so I went back and checked on eBay to see which one I had ordered, and it was the 88 degree one. So I went back on eBay to order the correct thermostat, and as it turns out, there's actually three different temperature ranges of thermostat to choose from. There's 88, 82, and 75 degrees Celsius, and that's the one I bought. I wanna give this the highest chance of not overheating. So about the 75 degrees Celsius thermostat. And by the way, do I know there's anything wrong with this thermostat? No, I have no idea. Like I said, I'm just throwing parts at this and see if they work. I also bought this. The lower radiator hose it has nothing to do with the overheating issue, but it was suggested when I bought the other stuff, so I got this too. New parts, yay. Welcome to the underside of the engine flap on the Robin. It's mostly heater under here, which by the way, I've kept on 100% of the time to sort of minimize the overheating issue. I think I have to take this off to have better access to the radiator, which you can't even see. It's under there. Leak. Sh oh God, that is just, that is broken. It's quite broken. And out goes the heater core and the fan. I should, you know what? I should, oh wait, this fan doesn't work. Should I work on it while I'm in here? You know what, it was easy to access. I'm just gonna leave it alone. How does that even work? The air goes in this opening at the front here and then it goes into a tunnel. The air comes out here and it has to make an extremely sharp downturn to even hit the radiator. The heater box on top here is the only thing blocking the airflow and keeping it from coming up. Otherwise it has to go down. I, it doesn't seem like this would get even flow over the whole radiator, but I'm not an aerodynamicist, so I don't know. Also, and this is just the theme with this car. You see all those holes in there? The fiberglass quality in here is abysmal. Those are just air holes. And if I press on it, it crackles. There's several other places like right here where it crackles. They just didn't get a good lay on the fiberglass in these areas in the corners and things. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's a Reliant Robin. The radiator on this side is not attached to the bracket at all. I think it's being held up by the upper radiator hose. It's just flopping around in there and it's actually kind of vibrated and eaten its way into the fiberglass a little bit. It's only a little rusty. Because this is so close, it might be easier to take the thermostat housing off first. Are you a 10 millimeter? No. Are you an 11 millimeter? What is this? Yes, lovely leakies. I guess it really doesn't matter if I destroy it. I've got two new ones. Well, I didn't mean to yank on it that hard. There we go. Ah, that's a good sound. What's stuck? Nothing. There we go. Radiator. Obviously the old radiator is quite a bit more gross looking than the new one, but also it's a complete miracle that it wasn't leaking because you see this gash right here? This radiator hose was rubbing on the fan belt and it's amazing that it didn't rub all the way through, but somehow it didn't and it stayed intact. I will be fixing this. Welcome back to another episode of Bob's Survival Guide. On today's episode, meal prep in the woods. Bob's for Survival Guide. Before we can think about our food, first we have to gather three forest found materials to build a cooker for our food. Those materials are a bundle of leaves, 10% dead, a single branchy twig, and a fresh vine ripened 
microwave. It's important you pick your microwave straight from the vine, as ones found on the forest floor will have leaked out most of their magnetrons. Gather these ingredients together, and you have a ready-to-use leafy twiggy microwave. Now for the easy part, the food. Again, the forest provides. Head over to your nearest factor bush and pick a delicious vine-ripened meal. My local bush variety happened to be cream corn chicken. There are many different subspecies of factor bush to choose from. My local species happens to be chef's choice, but there's also calorie smart, keto, and vegan to choose from. Once you have picked your fresh factor meal from the bush, you'll want to remove its shell, pierce its protective outer membrane, and put it in your leafy twiggy microwave for two minutes. If you happen to be one of the unfortunate souls that lives in a climate inhospitable to factor bushes, there is a company that can help you out. Factor75.com. Go there, use code AGINGWHEELS50 at checkout to get 50% off your order, and you can order a fresh factor meal picked straight from the vine and delivered to your door in a refrigerated box so you don't have to do the hunting and gathering. My factor is ready. You can have someone else do it for you and deliver it straight to your door. Whether you're lucky enough to have a factor bush nearby or you have to have them delivered to your door, factor is always incredibly delicious. Nature is amazing. And if you're extra lucky, you might even find a factor smoothie stream. You can also have those delivered to your door. That concludes this episode of Bob's Forest Survival Guide. Bob's Forest Survival Guide. And always remember, Factor75.com and use code AgingWheels50 at checkout for 50% off your first box. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. Aside from being newer, prettier, and more aluminum-y, this one was also slightly different. The spigot on the bottom comes straight out on this one, and this one comes up at an angle, which is incompatible with my lower radiator hose. It's not a big deal, I can just cut this end off, but apparently there were some slightly different designs, because this was obviously made to go but this is not. The new radiator has these little mounting tabs on the side to hold it in place. The old radiator doesn't have these, so you might wonder, how was it being held in place? It wasn't being held in place by anything other than the radiator hose's hopes and dreams. Nothing was holding it in place. It was floating in there, which made it really easy to take out, but is a problem. Okay, I think I may have figured out why there was nothing holding the radiator in place. There is one bracket for the radiator, and there, right there, there, hold on, get the lighting right, there's the second one. They're completely stuck in place. I cannot, here's the bolts down here. I have been at this one single bolt on the right there for an hour and I cannot get it out. It is completely stuck in place. This wouldn't be a big deal, but those brackets do not mesh with the radiator. The mounting holes are in the wrong place. And if I were to put the radiator where the mounting brackets are, the radiator would be in the fan. In short, the radiator and the brackets are completely incompatible. I need to take them out, but I can't remove them. So, all right, I've decided what I'm gonna do. To the side of this aluminum radiator, I've mounted some aluminum angle, and I'm just gonna screw this directly to the fiberglass inside there. Just forget about the brackets that are already in the robin, but unfortunately they're in the way, so I can't just forget about them. First, I have to cut them out. Is this too big? Angle grinder, will this fit? Do I have to use the air saw? Will this fit in here? I got one! I got one! <laughs> I got the other one! Down there are where some brackets used to be. There's that one, and that one. All right, I put a foam seal on the back of this radiator to hopefully get a chance of sealing against this wall here, and I've already attached the lower radiator hose because I had to cut it, and because I have no access down in there once it's in place. I've already drilled the holes, pre-drilled the holes in the fiberglass, and I had to go buy a right angle drill to do so. I should be ready to go now. I just drop it in there and screw it in place. And yes, I am screwing straight into the fiberglass. Annoyingly, I cannot see what I'm doing at all. Where is the thing? Yeah, we can just fast forward through this struggling. That would be strip it straight out. That didn't work at all. Well, you didn't think that was all the struggling, did you? No, that's a big no. Okay. I think I'm going to call it good because there's three screws on that side. There's only one screw on this side and it's barely held in place. But you got to remember before, the other radiator was not held in place by any screws whatsoever. So I think this is an improvement. Nothing is rubbing, including the radiator hose, which is good. Again, an improvement over before. Uh, the fan clears. I think I'm going to call that good. Let's get the, thermo the upper radiator hose and the thermostat and the housing all back in. 75 degree thermostat, gasket, 
Now, do I trust this gasket by itself or should I use silicone? I'm just going to go with it. Thermostat housing, I put this through an ultrasonic bath. It was unbelievably filthy. And I put the heater core back. Don't have to worry about the fan working because it doesn't. Well, that screw is doing literally nothing. Absolutely barely. There we go. That one will that one will hold everything. Yeah, see, that's how little uh, this heater box is being held in by those screws. One thing I couldn't help but notice here, the entirety of the heater core assembly is above the radiator fill. I don't understand how you're supposed to bleed this cooling system. All right, because I don't know the proper way to bleed this thing with its strange heater core situation, I'm just going to do it the way I know how, which is fill the radiator up, close the cap, let it idle for a few minutes, then check it, refill it, and just keep doing that a few times. Well, that ended quickly. The thermostat housing is leaking. Maybe I should have used silicone. Here's what happened yesterday. Nothing. The gasket on the thermostat was leaking, so I replaced it with RTV gasket maker, which called for a full 24 hours to cure. So I gave it a full 24 hours to cure, which means that now I am absolutely out of time. The video has to be finished today. So if it leaks coolant at this point, the video is just going to end abruptly with no conclusion. <gasps> well, I found the leak. I bet the thermostat gasket was fine. The housing is cracked right here. You might even be able to see it. I don't know if it was like this before. Probably not. What probably happened is I over tightened this bolt, pushed this foot down further than the rest of the housing and cracked the thermostat. Well, that's that. I got to order a new thermostat housing now. As soon as that arrives, I'll be installing it because the Robin is incredibly in my way. So you won't have to wait too long for a follow up video.